Welcome back. In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about reinforcers or rewards and punishments. First, I want to talk about rewards. It's actually more complicated than you might think. A reinforcer is defined as anything that increases the likelihood that a behavior will happen again. It turns out there's two types, positive rewards or reinforcers and negative reinforcers. A positive reinforcer is when I give you something nice as a reward. So um, getting a hug after um, I've done something nice at home, um, getting paid to clean my room, right? If you um, give your child a uh, monetary allowance or money for doing chores, right? That would be positive reinforcement. Now, negative reinforcement is when you take away something negative or bad, but it gets a little confusing because negative you think punishment, but no, this is a negative reinforcer. So remember we talked about that buzzing sound? Eh. When I get in the car, it makes this irritating sound until I do something, operant, right? I have to do something. I put the seatbelt on and what happens? That eh, stops. That is a negative reinforcer. I'm re it's something awful is being removed and that is still a reinforcer, okay? Um, uh, if your child is whining and crying in the store and that whining gets you to give them something to get them to shut up, that is, a re you've just reinforced the whining behavior, right? And you've done, so for you, it was a negative reinforcer. It got, giving the candy, got the kid to stop making uh, obnoxious, irritating sounds. So positive reinforcement is when you give someone something that's rewarding. So you want your child to do well in school. Maybe you pay them for each A grade that they earn. A negative reinforcer is when you take away something bad. So if I have a headache, I can take an aspirin and the aspirin takes away something bad, right? It takes away my headache, which increases the likelihood that the next time I get a headache, I'll take an aspirin. Now, punishment is obviously the opposite of a reward or reinforcer, okay? Here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna talk about positive punishment and negative punishment. So punishment is defined always as something that decreases the likelihood that a behavior will happen again. And it always a reward or reinforcer increases the likelihood that an action that you've rewarded will happen again. So it helps, I think, to think of reinforcers as rewards. Now, here's the thing. The removal of a punishment can be a negative reinforcer. Yeah, I know it's confusing, but we're gonna spend a little time going through this. So reinforcers always increase behavior. Punishments always decrease behavior. Now, both reinforcers and punishments can be positive or negative. Positive just means you're adding something. Negative means you're taking something away. So a positive reinforcer is when you add something pleasant. A negative reinforcer is when you take away something unpleasant. Punishments can also be positive and negative. A positive punishment is when you add something unpleasant right? Like a timeout. Um, a negative punishment is when you remove something that's desired. No more cell phone for you. That is um, a negative punishment because you're removing the desired cell phone. So here are some examples. Reinforcers. You can add something nice. Here's a gold star, Johnny. Or you can take away something unpleasant, right? Uh, oh, now you don't have to go to suspension. Um, you can also have a positive punishment where you add something unpleasant. Oh, time out for you. Or you take away something that's desired. No, nope, you can't have that doll. You can't have that cell phone. You can't have the car. So here's my cheat sheet for my students because you're going to have to remember positive and negative reinforcement and punishment. But it's, you can reconstruct it if you remember that positive is adding, negative is taking back right? Removing something. 
A reward or reinforcement is always increasing the behavior, the desired behavior, and a punishment is always decreasing the desired behavior. So just to keep working these concepts, here are some examples. A positive reinforcer will, would be something like giving a dog a cookie to perform a trick. Right? You do that because the odds that the dog will do the trick again are increased by giving the dog a cookie. Um, or you could um, do the negative reinforcement, like that irritating buzzer sound in, in, um, to get me to put my seatbelt on. Punishment could be positive. Um, a positive punishment would be when the police officer gives me a ticket for speeding um, or a child gets a timeout. Um, or a negative punishment, like, nope, no cell phone for you, I'm taking the crayons, whatever. Now in operant conditioning, if you're looking at the interaction of two people, something can be a positive reinforcer for one person and a negative reinforcer for the other. So I've got a cartoon here of a child who's crying. Um, the child, by crying in his bed, um, gets positively reinforced because the child gets to leave his bed where he's all alone and he gets to sleep with his parents. For the parents, it's negative reinforcer because they didn't want to listen to the kid crying. So they stopped the crying by putting the kid um, in the bed with them. Now, inevitably, when we get to this topic, people ask, all right, so how do I raise my child? Um, I am no expert in this. I do not have a child. I have never studied developmental psychology, but there are some basic principles that are widely known in psychology, so I thought we could go over those. B.F. Skinner said, um, you know, rewards, reinforcers work a lot better than punishment. Why didn't B.F. Skinner like punishment? Well, B.F. Skinner argued that punishment didn't actually make undesired behaviors go away, that it just suppressed them. It reduced their likelihood of happening, but the tendency was still in the person. So, um, for example, if you, your child swears and uses language that you don't want to hear, and you punish your child for using the language you don't want to hear, what's going to happen is a child is going to use that language when you're not around. So it teaches a child, don't use that language when mom's around. Okay. Um, punishment also teaches fear. So if a child is punished at school, the child is going to be fearful of school and nobody wants that, right? Um, parents who punish their children can um, unintentionally cause their children to fear them. And if you think about it, do you really want your child to be afraid of you? Physical punishment is really a, a disaster. It, it backfires. I know that some people really swear by it, but it, the research does not support that. So what physical punishment does, if you hit your child or beat your child, is that it teaches the child to solve problems through violence. How do we know this? Well, there's been research done on children who were spanked. And what we know is that children who are spanked by their parents are more likely to be depressed, they're more likely to be violent and aggressive, and they're more likely to have a very low self-esteem or very low sense of self. So um, the drawbacks of punishment are that it creates an unnecessary fear of the punisher um, if punishment is unpredictable, that's a disaster for a child because um, unpredictable punishment teaches a child that they have no control over their world, and that's a very expensive lesson to teach a child, right? Because then the kid gives up. Um, punishing a child tells a child what not to do, but it doesn't tell the child what to do, right? Maybe you're punishing a child for not making their bed, well, you need to, you could do that, or you could talk to them about the importance of making a bed and, and reward them. Hitting your children teaches your children to be violent, abusive people, right? Um, 
bullying, abuse is passed on intergenerationally. So if you beat your child, your child is more likely to try to solve the problems that he or she has at school by beating other children. So what do you do? Well, if you're going to uh, punish a child, the best thing to do is use, according to B.F. Skinner, is to use a mild punishment and reinforce the wanted behavior, okay? If you only pay attention to a child when that child is acting out, you're gonna get a child who acts out, right? You've reinforced that. Children want your attention, they want your love. So if you only pay attention to them when they're acting poorly, then they're gonna act poorly all the time. You need to explain to kids. It's amazing how powerful it is to explain things to children. Explain why the rules are the way they are. Kids are smarter than you give them credit for. And another really powerful thing, and yes, this works with children, but it works with everybody, is to frame uh, uh, contingencies in terms of positive incentives. You could say, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not getting dessert. Okay, that'd be clear. You could say exactly the same thing and get a much better response if what you say is, if you want dessert, then you need to eat your dinner. Doesn't sound like a big difference. It gives the child the power to make the decision about dessert. It's like, okay, if you eat your dinner, you get dessert. Reinforcers, in addition to being positive or negative, they can also be primary or secondary. Primary reinforcers are things that we are born um, liking. So for example, love, uh, food, air. These are all primary reinforcers. Secondary reinforcers are things that we have to learn our rewards. Someone had to teach you that money was rewarding. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper. You can't eat it. It doesn't love you, right? Um, letter grades. Someone has to teach you that letter grades are important because they're not primary reinforcers, right? They have to be taught. Okay, come right back and we're going to talk about how uh, social media companies and Las Vegas shapes your behavior.